What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode, that's right, of Min Maxing for Fun and Profit. We're here today to teach our players that because we have more of an intrinsic knowledge of how the game works than our GM, we are better than the game at him and thus must prove him wrong at every corner slash we are here today to prove to our players that we have a better knowledge of the game than them and our session's only going to last about five minutes before we kick them out of our house. Now, I can't promise these videos are going to come out every week. My schedule is super full. I happen to have a little bit of extra time on my hands this week, so I'm going to use that time for good instead of evil and put out a video. But what I will say is I'm going to endeavor to put out a new min-maxing for fun and profit video as often as possible because I see you guys calling for them. And, you know, I miss doing them. They're a lot of fun. At the request of Mr. Michael Baker, when I do have time for min-maxing for fun and profit, the videos I put out will be class specific. We'll be talking about my take on a certain class, how to play that class, how to optimize it. Honestly, if we can get this series rolling again, there will probably be two, three, four videos for a given class because some of them play so wildly differently, depending on your archetypes or fee investments, things of that nature. And today, we're going to talk about how to optimize the shifter. The shifter is Paizo's newest class. We talked about it right here, sort of a reaction review when my copy of Ultimate Wilderness came in. And at the time I was kind of yeah on them. I wasn't really sold, but now that I've GM'd for one in a high level one shot, now that I've helped build one, I understand how they work. And as such, I can optimize them. Hold on to your seats, kids. It's gonna get wild. My nap pun was bad. As always, these videos are brought to you by Patronage, and Patronage is the number one way to see this series come back on a regular scheduled basis, because at some point I do have to work, sleep, eat, and spend time with my loved ones. The link is in the description if you'd like to help out. Today, this video was brought to you by Joseph Harvilla. Joe, as always, thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Now let's dive in. So for those of us who may not know, for a quick rundown of the shifter, the shifter is a full base attack progression whose natural attacks progress as they level sort of like a monk, sort of like a war priest, sacred weapon in and of the fact that they start doing 1d4 points of damage and by 17th level they'll be critting times 3 at 1d10 damage. The shifter has several aspects that it can place on itself for buffs, for special abilities, and it gets its wisdom to its armor class when it's not wearing armor, like a monk. From what I've read of it, what you want to do in combat with your shifter who gets access to five aspects without a feat over the course of its 20 levels, is choose one form that is going to be our combat form, the form you want to optimize around, and have the rest of your forms for buffs or utility use. Bear, Bull, and Tiger, all three will give us enhancement bonus to our constitution, strength, and dexterity. Enhancement bonuses, as we know, don't stack with each other, so this right here can replace your belt of physical perfection in a low magic game or a game where you might not have a lot of cash floating around for a raw stat buff. This video will assume, assuming you can tell by my very clever title, that we'll be fighting in the aspect of the bear. That said, for our other four aspects, again, if you can't get your hands on a belt of physical perfection or want to save the gold, bull and tiger are musts. If you think you're going to have the gold, and remember these magical items that we wear will still affect us when we polymorph, I would suggest taking the bat form or falcon form for blind sense or dark vision, more importantly a fly speed, mouse for evasion and eventually improved evasion, and the option to turn into something tiny to squeeze through crevices, Dynanicus for the raw initiative buff and pounce is always nice when you want it, Wolverine for its additional one hit point per hit die, eventually getting access to the die hard feat for free and being able to treat your con as if it was eight points higher for the purposes of determining when negative hit points kill you, and Frog for the bonus to swim speed, especially if we'll be dumping strength for this character and we very well may be. For our race, it doesn't really matter what we play because most of the time we will be a bear. The most important ability scores for this build are, and this is probably a theme amongst most of my builds, Dexterity and Wisdom. By far, if we were on a 15 point or lower point buy, Dexterity and Wisdom are our bread and butter. Of course, don't ignore your constitution as you are a melee character, and if you can get your strength up, there's no reason we can't use strength for this build for some of the build, but Intelligence and Charisma, you can dump them as low as you want your character to be boorish and unintelligent. 
Now this build revolves around one feet, one feet that I'm kind of worried may get eroded at some point. So take this video with a grain of salt and take it with more of a grain of salt six months down the road. But this build does rely on the feet shifter's edge. To take shifter's edge, we must have 13 dexterity, weapon finesse, and the shifter's claws class feature. And it reads, whenever you use weapon finesse to make a melee attack with your claws, or a natural attack augmented by your claws, you also add your shifter level to the damage. This is the feat that keeps on giving, and this is the feat that makes this class what it is. Take this at level 3, and you're adding 3 to damage, and then when you ding shifter 4, you're adding 4 to damage. You guys see the plan here. It just ticks up forever and ever and ever and ever, till eventually at 20th level, all your attacks are adding plus 20 with no neg on the roll, this build doesn't even necessarily have to take power attack or piranha strike if your feet tax is too intensive or you're worried you won't hit. That's how crazy this is. Now the shifter can use their shifter claws in their beast form to augment the claws of whatever it is they shift into. Of course, if they shift into something like a mouse who doesn't have claws, they can use their shifter claw damage on like the mouse's bite attack, which is even more hilarious. But I think shifter's edge is intended for something like the bear form that would attack, bite, claw, claw, and then end their turn. Because those two claws are secondary attacks, they do half damage. Getting that shot in the arm that is the extra 20 helps them keep up. But the way we're playing this is we're going to treat our two bare arms. There it is, I made that pun again. As if we were using the two weapon fighting route. We're going to be just like that rogue who's trying to mine his sneak attacks. We're going to be just like the monk punching things with a little bit of a twist. Shifter's Claw reads, at 17th level, the damage die does not increase, but the critical multiplier becomes times 3. The reason we're going the bear route, at 15th level, the critical multiplier of your claw attack increases by plus 1, times 2 becomes times 3, to a maximum of times 4. So when it comes down to it, our two-weapon fighting Shifter is essentially dual-wielding sides. Now in our Shifter Wild Shapes, it functions as Beast Shape 2, and we will be taking the form of a dire bear, size category large, and our strength does buff by 4. However, again, we are trying to use Weapon Finesse to attack to get our Shifter's Edge to the damage. Some GM out there might make the argument that since your bear is large, the attacks are no longer light weapons. If this is the case, then maybe like tie some effortless lace around your wrists or something. I don't know exactly how you want to go with it. However, if we take the rogue cast in large person on him, I bet he's still going to be trying to use dex to attack and damage with his dagger or his short sword or whatever it is that he's running around with. So our feats are going to look pretty straightforward. We're looking at taking the two weapon fighting arc, which takes three of our ten feats if we are not a human. We're looking at taking Shifter's Edge to make sure we can do dex to damage and Weapon Finesse to have access to dex to the attack roll. Again, usually when I GM stuff like that, I will let my players not take super taxi feats because I think it takes the fun out of it. But if we're playing strict rules as written, that's five of your feats occupied right there. For your remaining five feats, double slice is a must to make sure you're doing full damage with both your claws. Two weapon rend is fun. We get it with the ape form of the shifter, but we can also take it on a feat. Really, the rest of these feats are entirely up to you. We're not going to fixate too hard on our character sheet in terms of what we're equipping ourselves with because you're pretty much looking at the straightforward array of stuff. Though there are two extra items we do need to talk about. One of them you may consider getting tattooed on you, which will be weird for Polymorph for some GMs, but from what I understand of it, your magic items continue to function on you and just kind of meld into your body when you Polymorph. So the first item we need to talk about is the Amulet of Mighty Fists. Now this has been eroded to cost as much as the scaling enhancement bonus on a weapon, as opposed to being super expensive like it used to be. But we're not here for the enhancement bonus. We're here because the Amulet of Mighty Fists is also able to grant magic weapon special abilities on our claws. Specifically, we'll be looking at the Speed Enchantment, a plus three bonus, the Keen Enchantment, and the Agile Enchantment, both plus one bonuses. Grabbing something like the Impact or Growing Enchantment does seem viable, but I recently learned reading an FAQ that things like the Impact Enchantment don't stack with things like Improved Natural Attack that say your damage dice increase by one step. This is brand new to me. I have definitely built several characters to just maximize the amount of D6 they can throw down at once. So I'm a little disappointed to find this in an FAQ, not an errata. Not sure how I'm going to feel going forward. From a strict rules as written point of view, the impact and growing enchantment are both super dead for us. So we're taking the speed enchantment for an extra attack during a full attack action. 
the keen enchantment, so we don't have to take improved critical and fill up our feet tree, as well as the agile enchantment, which will allow us to do dexterity to damage on any weapon that is weapon finessable. The second thing we need to grab isn't an item, it is a spell cast on us with permanency greater magic fang. Going this route, we don't have to worry about buffing our shifter claws. Our shifter claws can just straight do plus five enhancement bonus to attack and damage. Going this route, we can always keep up with that guy who's got the super magic longsword because our claws will be also super magical. Oh, at high levels, did I mention we can break barbarian DR? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So if our shifter begins play with a deck score of 20, has a plus five enhancement bonus from a permanent greater magic fang, plus six from your belt of physical perfection or aspect, whichever you go with, and plus five from your manual, and plus five for investing all the way into your decks as you level with a minus two from your size, assuming we're doing this in bear form, you're looking at a deck score of a still respectable 34 which is a plus 12 modifier. So in a full attack action, before any buffs from the rest of the party, we're looking at three attacks at 35, two attacks at 30, two attacks at 25, and a single attack at 20. We're going to assume that we're using our dexterity for damage and the agile enchantment, our damage dice, which are 2d8, using the shifter's claws on our bear form and the improved natural attack we gain, Hit for 2d8 plus 37 to damage. Again, this build does not take power attack. You certainly could drop something like Greater Vital Strike because you may not ever even use that to add power attack on. But the flat plus 20 Shifter's Edge gives us is super great and we don't have to take a penalty to our attack roll to use it. Also, we are dual wielding weapons that crit times four. A potential to crit for 212 damage at maximum, but hey, you know, I'll take it. Now, R to hit isn't necessarily the greatest thing in the world, so you may want to multi-class a little bit just to make sure we have some extra stuff to play with. But don't multi-class too far away from Shifter because you'll hurt yourself in the long run losing damage with Shifter's Edge. Dipping Barbarian, and I usually don't suggest this, but Dipping Unchained Barbarian will allow us to get a flat bonus to our attack and damage rolls. And as always, Dipping Swashbuckler means we can screw with the action economy and that's never a bad thing to do. In addition, one might also think about dipping Alchemist for the mutagen ability, as that is an alchemical bonus to an ability score. Though we are hurting our wisdom, which is our armor class on a shifter, and I don't think I need to talk again about how we can get a higher armor class than the full plate guy with a build something like this. To see what I'm talking about, you can look right here. So in the past, we've talked about how to build an optimized party and how instead of the classical tank damage and healer roles, we run something along the lines of a Punisher, a couple of switch hitters, and a couple of crowd control guys. The shifter takes the role of the switch hitter. Though using the frog aspect, we can get a pretty impressive threat range and thus be a pretty effective Punisher. The shifter occupies the niche of the switch hitter because it has so many move speeds. If you need to charge something and pounce, use Tiger or Dynanicus. If you need to stand up and fight and you're trying to mine crits, we can turn into what this video is focused on something that's dual wielding scythes. If you need to fly, you can fly. If you need to swim, you can swim. And if we can find room for the feet, shifters rush, which allows us to shift as a free action during our movement when we use a move action to move 10 feet or more, or when we charge, we have this pretty much whenever we need it. So if we need to suddenly charge and pounce somebody, we've got it. If we need to move two squares and then fly away, we have that as well. And the major form of the frog aspect does give us a reach of 30 feet with a weapon that's doing our shifter claw damage. And though this would be an entirely different video, a shifter punisher build is certainly viable for this exact reason. But by that same token, if you need another punisher to support the main punisher, if things are getting too out of hand for him to handle, or if he goes down, the shifter can, at the cost of 10 feet of movement by moving a feet around, have a 30 foot reach as a free action or as a standard action if you don't have it, which is still fine, which is why I'm pretty firm that at least this shifter build hangs out in the switch hitter position. Of course, however, this is just one man's opinion. Have you guys had the opportunity to play a shifter yet? Have you GM'd for one? Let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll keep the conversation going. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and we'll see you next time.